Here are top stories on the hour. Japan engine rockets explodes during test. Russia launches overnight drone attack on Ukrainian president's hometown. Hollywood actor and writers on strike welcome to the world news on VOP TV. I am Joy Adesua Iromoseli. A Japanese rocket engine exploded during a test on Friday in the latest blow to the country's space agency. Science and Technology Ministry officials Naoya Tekigami told reporters that the Epsilon S, an improved version of the Epsilon rocket that failed to launch in October, blew up roughly 50 seconds after ignition. The testing site in the northern prefecture of Akita was engulfed in flames and a huge plume of grey smoke rose into the sky. Takagama stated that so far there are no reports of injuries from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, which was investigated the cost, which was investigating the cause of the explosion. The malfunction comes after Tokyo in March saw its second attempt to launch its next generation H3 rocket fail after liftoff and after the failed launch of the solid fuel Epsilon in October. Meanwhile, the Chandrayaan-3 craft with an orbiter, lander and a rover is due to lift off at 14.35 on Friday from Sri Rukota Space Center. Space officials stated that the lander is due to reach the moon on 23rd to 24th August. If successful, India will be only the fourth country to achieve a soft landing on the moon following the US, the former Soviet Union and China. The third in India's program of lunar exploration, Chandrayaan-3, is expected to build on the success of its earlier moon mission. Officials in charge of Chandrayaan-1 stated that this comes 13 years after the country's first moon mission in 2008, which carried out the first and most detailed search for water on the lunar surface and established that the moon has an atmosphere during daytime. Chandrayaan-2, which also comprised an orbiter, a lander and a rover, was launched in July 2019, but it was only partially successful. Its orbiter continues to circle and study the moon every day, but the lander rover failed to make a soft landing and crashed during the touchdown. Indian Space Research Organization ISRO chief stated that they have carefully studied the data from the last crash and carried out simultaneous exercise to fix the glitches. Chandrayaan-3, which weighs 3,900 kilograms and costs $75 million, has the same goals as its, as, as its predecessors to ensure a soft landing on the moon's surface. Solar's foreign ministry announced on Friday that South Korea slapped sanctions on four North Korean individuals and three entities in response to the regime's launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile earlier this week. The targets of the sanctions include high-ranking North Korean officials and businesses involved in the financing of Yongyang's illicit nuclear and missile program. The foreign ministry stated in a press release that the move was made in response to North Korea's launch of a long-range ballistic missile on July 12, which threatened the peace and security of the Korean Peninsula and the international community. North Korea test-fired its new Wang-18 solid-fire ICBM on Wednesday during widespread international condemnation and prompting an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council. Among the sanctioned individuals, an official Jong Yong Tak 
director of the General Political Bureau overseeing the North Korean military, and Park Wang-ho, the former propaganda director of the regime. Also blacklisted are Park Wang-sung and Wang Ki-su, who run the company of Congo Akond, which is based in the Democratic Republic of Congo and earns revenue for the North through construction and statue building projects with local government. Meanwhile, North Korea on Friday denounced the United Nations Security Council for holding a meeting over its recent intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM, saying it will continue to push for the most overwhelming nuclear deterrence until the United States drops its hostile policy against Yongyang. The 15-member Security Council met after North Korea said it tested on Wednesday its latest Wang Song 18 ICBM. A 56-year-old man was injured in an overnight Russian drone strike on Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky hometown, the central city of Kiviri. The attack damaged a number of buildings in Kiviri, but Ukraine's air force disclosed that 16 of the 17 Iranian-made Shahed attack drones launched by Russia overnight had been shot down by southern and eastern areas of the country. Regional Governor Sahil Lisak disclosed this on Telegram that fallen debris damaged a municipal enterprise, two residential buildings and a transport company in Kriyiri. City Mayor Olesander Viluk disclosed that windows had been blown out in apartment blocks and private houses, hospitals and schools. The drone launches were latest in a series of attacks in which the capital, Kiev, came under attack on three successive nights this week. Russia did not comment on the attacks and denied deliberately targeting civilians. Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that he offered Wagner machineries the opportunity to continue serving together in Russia after their mutiny last month against Moscow's military leadership. Putin stated that his offer was one of several he made at a meeting with approximately three dozen Wagner fighters and their founder, Yegeny Prigogine, five days after Wagner's first staged short-lived revolt last month. Under Putin's offer, the mercenary force could remain serving under their current commander, who is identified only by his call sign of grey hair. Commissant stated that Putin spoke of meeting 35 Wagner fighters and Prigozhin in the Kremlin and offering them options for the future, including remaining under their commander of 16 months. As Putin is the army commander-in-chief, it seemed to be implying that the machinery force would remain within the Russian military, although he did not say this explicitly. Now the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived at Jakarta and met with Wang Yi, China's leading diplomat amid allegations of a Chinese cyber espionage attack targeting U.S. government emails. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller stated that the conversation between the two top diplomats on the margin of the Association of Southeast Asian Nation Foreign Ministers meeting was part of ongoing efforts to maintain open channels of communication to clarify U.S. interest across a wide range of issues and to responsibly manage competition by reducing the risk of mis misperception and miscalculation. According to a senior State Department official, Blinken made clear to Wang in Jakarta that any action that targets the U.S. government, U.S. companies or American citizens is of deep concern to them and appropriate action will be taken to hold those responsible accountable. 
Diplomats who attended the, the closed-door 90 minutes exchange described the talks as more focused than the one in Beijing, with both sides zeroing in on areas of interest. On Blinken's part, one key focus was a fatanil, a sometime deadly painkiller behind what the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention calls an oponoid overdose epidemic. In Beijing and again in Jakarta on Thursday, Blinken pushed hard for China to crack down on the manufacture of precursor chemicals essential for making the drug. According to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Wang reiterated China's claim on Taiwan, called on Washington to cancel unreasonable and illegal sanctions against China and stated that the U.S. should cease suppressing China's economy and technology. According to UNICEF, at least 289 children have died or all disappeared attempting the dangerous Mediterranean Sea crossing from North, Amer North Africa to Europe so far this year. It stated that this equates to nearly 11 children dying and disappearing every week urging governments to better protect vulnerable children by creating safe and legal pathways for them to migrate and seek asylum. The UN's Children's Clarity estimates around 1,500 500 children have died or gone missing while attempting the crossing since 2018. However, it states that the figure is likely higher as many shipwrecks go unrecorded. Last month, dozens of people died and hundreds were unaccounted for after an overcrowded fish boat carrying around 750 migrants capsized in the Mediterranean Sea, 45 miles off the coast of Greece. Amongst the, the missing were large numbers of women and children. A count in central China stated on Friday that a Chinese kindergarten teacher who had poisoned 25 of her students, killing one, has been executed. A notice posted outside the number one intermediate court in the Henan province city of Ziazua stated that the Wang Yong sentence had been carried out on Thursday. 40 years old Wang was convicted of putting toxic sodium nitrite in porridge served to children at Memeng Preschool Education on March 27, 2019, following an argument with a, following an argument with a colleague identified only by the surname Son Over Student Management. The notice disclosed that while other students recovered fairly quickly, one student identified only by the surname Wang died from multiple organ failure and 10 months of treatment. A high school dropout Wang had previously poisoned her husband with the same su substance, but online two years ago, he survived with mild injuries. The International Criminal Court's chief prosecutor disclosed on Thursday that he had launched an investigation into new alleged war crimes in Sudan's Dofa region. In his briefing to the UN Security Council, Karim Khan stated that the violence between the Sudanese army and the Rapid Support Force RSF paramilitary group had spilled into Dofa where atrocities amounting to war crimes had been committed in 20, 2003. Khan stated that the country is in peril of allowing history to repeat itself. The African nation has been engulfed by violence again two decades after a conflict broke out. Over 3,000 people have been killed and more than 3 million have been have, have had to, fl to flee their homes since the conflict began in April 15th. Finally, finally, Hollywood's actor and writer will join forces to picket line from Friday 
after studio failed to reach a, a deal that's that this week with the Screen Actor Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. It is the first time the two unions have been on strike simultaneously since 1960 when actor and future U.S. President Ronald Reagan led the protest. Among the SAGAFRTRS 160,000 strong ranks are many of the world's biggest stars. Hollywood's A-listers from Tom Cruise to Angelina Jolie to Johnny Depp and card-carrying union members. Star stars including Meryl Streep, Ben Stiller and Colin Farrell have come out publicly in favor of the strike. That's a wrap on the World News on VOP TV. I am Joy Adesua Eramoselli. Business news comes up shortly. Thank you.